It is muddy, bud. We got to go to the grass. How's it going, everyone? We're out in Kansas today in some public land looking for some rabbits and squirrels. I hope, anyway, we have a uh, waterfowl hunt planned later this week. But I thought we'd take advantage of the days we have and see if we can go get ourselves some small game while we're here. So, Oslo leading the way. Hopefully not going to destroy my belt loop that he's attached to. And we're going to check out this whole area and see if we can find anything. Should be fun. Never done this before. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Look at all these eaten hedge apples. Might have found the spot. There are a ton of little spots up in trees where they've eaten hedge apples too. So now I just need to spot them. You know, as you get older and you start hunting and stuff like that, you start to wonder when you go through places like this, and there's all these bare trees and stuff like that. And you just think to yourself, is this where I think they're going to be? Or is this where I want them to be? You know, like I really want them to be just sitting there on one of those bare trees. But is this really where they would be? Especially when you're not seeing anything. You ever think that? You ever, you ever think that to yourself? Sure is pretty out here. Until you start looking up at the sky, looking for squirrels and snow goes into your eye and then you're digging it out of there. What do you smell, Ozzy? Nope. That is a little woodpecker. <laughs> I got excited. I was like, something finally moving on a tree. Darn it all. Made our way back to the crab apple trees and we're just kind of squatting low, seeing if we see anything move. Currently, the only thing moving is Oslo. What do you think? Are we having fun? Are we out on a good walk? We're not seeing anything, but we're walking, aren't we, buddy? Says it would be more fun if we saw something. Back out into the meadow again. Teach you something about hunting in Kansas since, you know, from here and whatnot. This is called a do not let your dog go under it tree. So insider info for you. <laughs> but you too. Finally see one. Jumped up on that tree and then he jumped down to the ground. the initial tree he was on and then I did see him hop down and run this way wait a few minutes and see if we see anything move <laughs> so wild what, what do you think it's snow 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 this time around but maybe next time you know it's uh it's never a shame to go out and certainly give it a go especially when you got a dog with you then they just think it's a good walk they're just enjoying the whole thing they don't care if you get something or, or nothing at all this is the best walk of the year according to oslo and that's uh that's worth something in my book Woo! Woo! it's a bumpy road especially on a rainy day so i'm gonna put this camera down and get uh get back to the old homestead but i'm glad i could take you along for the ride and i know we have another hunting adventure i hope uh in a few days so we'll just see fingers crossed if not this will just be a fun little section in another video <laughs> a few days later i met with jordan and brad who had recently been finding some luck goose hunting in central kansas and i was hopeful that i may be able to join in on some of this good fortune
we're touching? No. We'll see how that does. Yeah. That'll work. I like it. Clean the flock. There's more. That, that was, yeah, there might be more. Get ready, reload. God damn, boy. That worked out. Woo. You better keep calling, Dory. <laughs> I was like, I thought I was going to call somebody. I turned around, there's their cup up. Now, now you're hooked. <laughs> I'm a goose hunter for life now. Yeah. Well, most people are when you when you get to do that. <laughs> well, maybe. I think I think we all shot one of them pretty good. That's the way it always happens. That, that first one that just dropped out, I think we all nailed that. Well, it's the golden time. That's that's always the quandary. Do I go out and get them, or or do I, or do I wait? Because they may. <laughs> I might have to, might have to order another one, huh? You sound good on it. Well, you called those in. Well, I was like, I was just messing around. I was like, I'm waiting to call some in, and then I turn around. There's yeah, four of them cupped up right there. I'm like, well, shit. That was that's, isn't it fun to watch them do that? Oh yeah, that was beautiful. All the goose meat you want now. <laughs> we'll, we'll clean them right up for you. How about that? Hey, sounds good. Oh, bunch of them. They're going to feed. Yep, yeah, they are. They're going out to feed. There are so many of them. Shots, two geese. So, <laughs> I hope you got footage of that. Yep, you took yours and I took mine. <laughs> Flight canceled. Sixty more than sixty pounds of geese, probably. Because I mean, some of those are bigger than ten. Brad, thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate it, sir. You're welcome. Had a great time, and Jordan, thanks for waking up for me. Yep. Had a great time. Glad you could make it. Oh yeah. We'll do it again. That's what I was gonna say. I always come back around Thanksgiving and Christmas, so yeah, we'll, we'll just have to make it an annual oh, thing. Sure. 
<laughs> so this is a uh, slightly frozen. I threw this all back in the freezer after thawing just to get slightly frozen. And that is allowing me to get these nice slices of this goose breast here, which Oslo thinks smells pretty good. I'll, I'll be curious to see how this turns out. I've never actually done this myself. Usually it was my, uh, my dad when I was growing up that did all the jerky, but We'll see, and, and goose jerky at that. I've always, always just uh, done deer in the past. <laughs> Look what we got, we got an original blend. Mesquite blend, wild goose, and then we've got hickory blend. This is something my dad used to always do when I was growing up. He'd buy a bunch of different ones of these and then we would like try each and every one of them. And looking back, I wish I could remember better which ones I liked back then. But you know, this one actually says wild goose on it. So you would think that one's gotta be the one that's meant to be for this. So we are gonna take, I've got four, four breasts in that one right there. And so we'll, right full mesquite on there and then uh give that a go see how that goes i suppose good deal all right now we just need to weigh all these mad lads find out how much they weigh and then we'll look at the uh chart here figure out how much we're supposed to use to uh season all of this big one 2.12 all right so for the sake of time and all that i have to do got the seasoning and the cure i can just put my hand over top like this or put some tape over the top mix it all together here hopefully and then we are going to lay this all out flat and season over top of it all throw it back in the bag leave it overnight 24 hours and then do that with the other ones as well to just kind of start with a dusting over everything so I do want to make sure that I have enough for everything and then can flip them over and still have some but hopefully when they go back into the the bag everything will kind of mix together well you know as a man who has made a few snacks in his day there was a real part of me that wanted to just mix this up like puppy chow gotta be gotta be a reason why it didn't say to do that in the directions i don't know ah. all right i have put four different trays of jerky on here we are using the presto dehydro i did do some reading real fast and basically said that we need to do this for 10 to 12 hours so i might check that just to make sure but i guess i'll turn this puppy on and uh we'll do some waiting i suppose uh-huh. To unplug something here. There we go. There we go. Now the whole house is gonna smell like jerky. Okay, currently been about five and a half hours. These are looking pretty good. The really thin ones, um, I think are darn near completed. Um, you can bend them and they'll crack. Uh, but they don't break. They are a little bit chewy, especially these thicker ones. Um, I mean, they really, really bend and they're quite soft if you squeeze them. So I think they need to stay in for a bit longer, but the real thin ones like chips almost, I think are, are good. I could probably take them out. But yeah, see that one's already cracking and uh, snapping. So might be, might be something where we need to go through and get all of the real thin ones out of here and leave the thicker ones in. All right, one whole bag of mesquite, which is this wild, wild goose jerky cure seasoning, all finished up. Tastes pretty good. The process throughout the night was something else. We gave it the initial four and a half hours or whatever that the instructions said, and then in the instructions, it had mentioned checking on it every half hour, which I thought was ridiculous. Um, so I put in an hour 45 for the first time, 
And then some of the real thin ones were pretty crispy, so I put them into the bag and then put another hour 45 on. And essentially I was waking up like every hour 45 throughout the night to check on this and I would remove some of the ones that looked good to me. And basically when I would go to, you know, bend it, it would start, start to like crack up and like, you know, almost if you gave it a little tear at that point, it would tear. But that's a... Uh, that's pretty much the point I was waiting for. So I would say overall, we probably gave it a good 10 hours for some of the real thicker pieces, but. Flavor's nice, I like it. I've never had goose jerky before, just deer. So now it's real nice. Oh yeah, now the seasoning's kind of kicking in. Tastes a little bit, that's good. I like that. I'm eager to get the original and the hickory, I believe, on there as well. We'll do a little taste test, see which one we like best. All right, we've got Hickory, Original, and Mesquite. All right, let's give this a go, Mesquite. Let's go ahead and grab one out of here. Flavor is coming in at the end. Had a little bit of goose flavor at the very beginning, or just meat in general. Mm-hmm, very soft smokiness, mostly just kind of salty, I will say. I don't know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, going to the original now. A little bit sweeter than the mesquite. Not so much uh, uh, smoky, but you're getting the seasoning, getting a little bit of the sweetness in there. That's yeah, nice, but it really didn't feature much of a smoky taste much at all, honestly. All right, so far, uh, smoky, a little salty. Got sweet and a little salty. Now the hickory. A slightly lighter smoky taste like you can still taste it but not as heavy as the mesquite anyway almost like a sweet smoke get a little bit of saltiness in there so it's kind of it's kind of interesting it's like a got we've got the hickory which is kind of like a light smoke salty a uh, little bit of sweet maybe we've got salty and sweet with no smoke really and then with the mesquite salty uh very smoky if you're wondering what flavor to get Think about what uh, think about what you like. You like smoky with some salt? That's mesquite for you. You want no smoke, but really kind of salty and sweet? Bjorn wants some, that's for sure. Uh, original is your go-to. Hickory, a little bit of sweet, salty, and then a slight smoke to it. Maybe it'll help you out in deciding what you want to try. I think we should give the dogs a little bit of a try and see what they think about it. As expected, I think they liked all three of them. All three passed the dog test. That's good to see. Well, if we take a look in the old workshop right now, we got the old snowblower that we had to take apart to deal with. Well, we've cleaned it all out and replaced some of the parts, so hopefully it should work. We've got our uh, rifle stock project, which I'm eager to get into right now. We've got everything marked out, and I have some little woodworking chisels, or, or big woodworking chisels, I suppose, coming in from Beavercraft to get into this. And I'm hoping to get started officially in February. I've been going through all of the checkering in here, kind of getting it uh getting all the um sanding and stuff that we did uh, out of there and i still have a little bit more to do but I, you can see how i've done the outline of it just getting all that gunk out of there that way when we put you know the the coats of varnish or whatever on top of it um, we're not sealing all that in uh, it might make it even more difficult when we go ahead and do it all after we uh, finish it all up but seeing at the changes we're going to be making to the stock i mean we're going to have to redo this checkering anyway and i know that was a big thing in the first video that we did was a lot of people said why did you deal with all that checkering you're gonna ruin it it's just awful uh, guys, I was planning on redoing the checkering to begin with because of this large chunk that we're going to have to take out of the forend here is going to ruin the checkering. So I was going to have to go in there and redo it anyway. So I really wasn't worried about that. And I understand for those people who weren't planning to do that, that could be a big uh, thing that they might have had to uh, or might have been able to avoid. And, uh, and yet I'm the one who uh, forced them to do it, I suppose. But anywho, you know, this is all a learning process. Maybe next time I'll do it differently. Who's to say? Heading back to Kansas to see family and celebrate holidays is always such a treat. And when you can toss in a fishing or hunting trip into the mix, it makes it all the more sweeter. I owe a huge thank you to Brad and Jordan for taking me out goose hunting, and I'm looking forward to our next outing.
If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more content in the future. Feel free to check out a few of our other videos on the modern day outdoorsman with new videos every week.